Hey guys, I wanted to start out this video by saying thanks to all you guys who've been commenting, liking my videos and subscribing. Every time you do one of those things, it really means a lot. I really, I mean that, I really do mean that. So um, as far as the video, I wanna be talking to you guys about what a program diagram is basically, and then showing you how I make one on Photoshop. It's a really easy thing to do and I recommend you guys always do it before you start designing. That way you can avoid mistakes in the future. But what exactly is a program diagram? Sometimes it's called a bubble diagram. These are diagrams that you create before you start designing and you start coming up with the spaces that are gonna be located inside your design. But at the same time, you wanna see how big or small these spaces are in relationship to each other. So you're not thinking about square footage, you're just thinking about, okay, this space is gonna be bigger than this space and I want this one to be directly connected to this one. I want it to be adjacent to this one. I want it to be far away from the other one. You get the point. There's many things you can show in a program diagram, but today I'm gonna to be showing you the basic one that I create, and it's gonna cover exactly what I just told you. So the first thing I do on Photoshop is I create four groups. I divide it by private, public, semi-private, and support spaces. And these support spaces can be your laundry room or a mechanical room. And like I said, you can divide it however you want to. Some people do it by hierarchy, but I, I like to do it uh, divided by private versus public. Once I do that, I create a circle and I make these dashed lines as, as you just saw me do. Um, and that's just a, a design preference. You don't have to do the dashed line that goes around it and I give it some color. And you'll notice that I color coat the, the layer, the group at the bottom, but I, the same color that I color coat the actual layer itself. And that's so I don't get confused when I have a thousand layers and I, and I start losing them. Um, but then I create another layer with a shadow on it. And again, this is just another design preference that I do just to make these elements on the screen begin to pop a little bit and it gives it a little bit of character to your actual diagram. Once you do that, you select the text box option and then you name each bubble and now these bubbles begin to represent the spaces. And you can play around with the, with the size later and, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then you select the layer of the shadow and the actual ellipse layer. And now you can resize them. Don't ever select the text because then it's gonna make it go crazy. But once you've done that, you can close that group and then name it. And like I said, it helps if you stick to naming things and color coding everything so that you don't make mistakes in the future and you don't lose your stuff. Especially when it's the end of the semester and you wanna go back and you wanna edit something you have no idea what you've done. And sometimes you have 50, 100 layers. Of, you know, I've, I've even had 300 layers in some cases. So yeah, it does get messy. Try to be as organized as possible. But I don't have to be telling you guys that. You guys should know. So then it's as easy as duplicating the group, right? And something that I'm doing here is um, I'm reshaping the bubble because we have a master bedroom and we're making now the second um, bedroom and obviously we don't want these to be the same size. Now, like I told you before, we're not talking about square footage here. We're just talking about the relationship these spaces have with each other. So I'm making my second uh, bedroom now, and you're gonna notice I'm gonna keep it the same size as my first bedroom because in, my, in this case, in this uh, house that I'm designing, these two rooms, I want them to be the same. And now my uh, imaginary client in this case wants an office and he wants a private office. So it's gonna stay in the private group. Um, and, I'm an, and, and he doesn't need a huge office. He just needs something personal. A little tip is that if you wanna, um, design is all about detail. So when you're making these diagrams, you wanna put as much detail as possible, even if it's little subtle moves. Something that I like to do is that shadow layer I created, I like to rotate it just a little bit 
people won't notice off the bat but subconsciously people start to notice that you're putting in a little bit of more detail into it that they don't really realize what you're doing but it just makes things pop and it makes things read so much better so i like to rotate my shadows a little bit and i don't do it all the time um but but i try to do it as often as possible so we're pretty much done with our private spaces uh my client doesn't need a bathroom. He says he'll use the backyard, so we're not going to add any bathrooms to this house. Uh, we're going to copy one of the bubbles that we did in the private, that group, and we're going to move it into the semi-private. We're going to rename it, um, in this case, kitchen, and then we're also going to rename the actual group itself. Remember, it's all about organization. And we're going to go ahead and change the color of it. Now changing the actual color of the bubble is really simple. All you have to do is select the layer and then make sure you select on the left hand side the ellipse tool. That way it'll unlock all the properties of the layer itself and then you can change the color. And you'll notice that I select the color but I usually select one from the palette and it's very intense. So then I go a little bit deeper and make that color lighter. And my client wants a big kitchen. He wants a kitchen the size of the master bedroom, which is gonna be huge in this case. So we're gonna make one, the bubble that's a similar size to the master bedroom. In this case, we wanted to add a library to our design and we wanted a personal library. So what I did was that I compared the size of the bubble of the library from the one in the office and that's the really good thing about these diagrams is that you can take one of the bubbles that you've created and move it around and now you can start playing around with the location and you can start playing around with the sizes actually comparing it to other spaces so in real time you can design without actually having to use any other program And it's a matter of repeating the same step over and over. You copy the, the group into another group and then you just change its color and you change the, sh the size. That's what makes this so easy. So once you have all your spaces decided and once you have them all created, now we want to get into the actual fun part, which is playing around with the design of the space. Now, something I like to do is I like to show my main circulation as a rectangle and I play around with the graphic of it. Like I said before, it's all about details. So the more different line weights you have and the more uh, line styles you have, the more interesting it makes your, your diagram look. So I usually make a rectangular box. I like to make it a thin box and then I like to change the line style of it just so it makes the plan a little bit more interesting. And we'll make another group, we'll call it diagrams and we'll put it above everything else. Here's where we're gonna put our arrows, we're gonna put any other floating text that we might wanna add, anything else that doesn't involve the actual spaces themselves. Now you can easily create your own arrow or you can do what I did, which is go to Google, type in arrow PNG and just bring that into your Photoshop file. It's usually quicker than having to model your own arrow. So this arrow represents my main entrance. This is where the entrance of the house is gonna be located. Remember, you're not thinking of up, down, left, right necessarily right now. I'm not thinking that the entrance is gonna be to the left or to the right of the house. It's, I'm just saying, this is the entrance. This is where people are gonna access the house. And what is the first thing they're gonna encounter? The first thing they're gonna encounter in this case is a public living room. After that, I'm gonna have a small bar 
located next to my living room. That way, when I have guests over, I can have them seated um, in a bar. Or, you know, you can play around with it if you want to move it all the way to the back. It's up to you what you want to do. That's part of the design. But that's what makes this so um, interesting because it just it just makes everything so much easier without having to actually be designing. So that ends my public. Now let's bring in the semi-private. Um, in this case, the client doesn't want the the kitchen and the backyard and the library to be necessarily used by everybody that enters his house. So he doesn't mind if they see it necessarily. Um, and he doesn't mind if some of his friends that come over access the space. So they're still gonna be located in accessible areas um, or they're gonna be visible, but they're not gonna be open to everybody that enters the house. So at first I thought, hey, let's put the library next to the game room. But then you start thinking, well, what if it gets loud in the game room? Or you have guests over and they're all in the game room, they're all hanging out, and you have someone else that's reading inside the house. Well, you wouldn't want those two next to each other necessarily. I mean, there's ways around it, of course, but in this case, for this example, I, I don't want that. So I'm gonna move the library to the opposite side. This is what you guys have to be thinking when you're creating these diagrams, just playing around. Once you, once you figure out what the sizes are, and that's that's a conversation you wanna have with yourself too, what sizes are these? Is, is this really gonna be effective if it's smaller or larger? Um, but also thinking about, hey, if I put this here, what's gonna happen? What are the pros and cons? And it helps if you make an actual list of once you place everything, you start writing down the pros and cons of placing it there. You know, is it gonna be accessible? The noise? the light, you know, the time of day. There's a lot of diagrams and as designers, we tend to do this holistically, but, um, but that's why these diagrams are so helpful. Now in this case, this is a little trick I wanna show you. Let's say that you wanna have one of the spaces accessible, but you, won't, you don't want it to be part of the main circulation of the house, right? So you want to have maybe a secondary connection to it, a secondary form of circulation. That's what I like to do. And this is the way that I show it. And I can't stress it enough, guys. These lines that I'm doing, the curves, the angles, they don't necessarily mean anything. You could give them a meaning, but a question would be, oh, so you wanna make the path to the library a curve? No, that's not what I'm saying. This is just a loose diagram that I'm, that I'm designing. But by all means, you know, you could start thinking about these things, but I suggest you don't because you don't wanna be thinking about form yet. You don't wanna be thinking about what is the walkway to the library gonna be unless you're thinking diagrammatically. So once I have all my spaces uh, selected, we're gonna go on and move to the private area, the bedrooms of the house. Now my imaginary client, he has kids, right? But he doesn't want those kids up all night playing Fortnite and him having to deal with that because he works a nine to five job, but he goes running in the morning. So he has to wake up at five in the morning, let's say every morning. He doesn't want to be dealing with that. So he wants his kids' rooms on the opposite side of the house, right? He wants them near each other, but he just wants them on the opposite side of the house. So that's what we're doing here. We're placing them near the back of the house, but we're uh, near the backyard. See, I'm, I'm saying back front. We're not, uh, even though I said that, we shouldn't be thinking about that. We should mostly be thinking, I, I want the two bedrooms next to the backyard. So the client wants his two um, or rather all his bedrooms near the kitchen and near the backyard for the best access, but he doesn't want them to be near each other necessarily. And then we place a secondary arrow and this one you're gonna notice I make it smaller and that's because it's for a secondary entrance or exit. And now that we've placed everything where we want to place it, we start making the connections again.
And now we're getting to the end of the video. So once again, I wanna thank all you guys for liking, for commenting, for subscribing to my channel. Um, I can't stress it enough that if you have any question, I don't care how simple or dumb you think it is, go ahead and ask it. I'm, because I'm a small channel, I'm really good about answering. I'll pretty much answer immediately once I get that notification. If I don't, it's usually because I'm either sleeping or at work. Um, but feel free to reach out and I'll try my best to help you out. And if your um, comment or question is something that is kind of complicated to answer, I'll probably even make a video and I'll throw it at you. So thank you guys again and I'll talk to you guys soon.